In 2018, I heard the news that XXX Tentacion had been shot uh, in his car in Florida and had been taken to the hospital. I didn't know if he was going to live, if he was going to die, um, but it saddens me to admit, at the time, my genuine reaction to seeing that story was happiness. And it was hope that he would die. I, I, I wanted him to die. I... I'd be lying if I said otherwise. And when I heard he did die, I was happy. I felt joy. I thought, thank God, one less piece of shit scumbag abuser on this planet. That's why I'm making this video today because in the last three or so years, um, I feel like I have really evolved on this front and looking back and thinking about how I felt on that day, it saddens me. Um, the thing is, when it comes to abuse, when it comes to sexual assault, when it comes to rape, um, those three things, it is so hard for me to have any empathy or any even sympathy um, or even just to see the humanity in anybody who has done those three things. Um, so of course, I mean, X's history is well known. Um, a lot of people will deny that he did it. I will just say, um, even now that I feel like I've changed my tune on like actively wishing harm uh, on X and I, I really wish I hadn't felt like that. Um, I, I do feel like objectively looking at uh, the case, um, you know, cause it, it did go to court um, and just looking at the evidence I think it's very, very probable that he was an abuser, that he did abuse his ex-girlfriend. Um, was her entire account of all the fucked up things he did, was every single one of them true? I don't know. Um, but I do think it is fair to say that it is very probable that he abused her in some form. Um, and so knowing that about him, knowing that about anyone, it is so hard for me to see past that because... Uh, for me, that is just the most repulsive, disgusting, horrible thing you could do to someone else. And especially in the past, when I found out that someone was an abuser or a rapist or a sexual uh, uh, abuser or anything of that nature, I, I basically stopped seeing them as human. I, I wished nothing but ill on them. I had pure hatred for them. In, in a lot of ways, I still do. Um, but I'm trying to get to a place where... I can empathize with anybody because that's something that I've always prided myself on is being an empathetic person. But I think over the last year or so, I've really been trying to reckon with the fact that, you know, can you be truly empathetic unless you can empathize with the, uh, the people who do the worst things, the people that I guess you could call the, the worst people. But I feel like that kind of goes against what I'm saying, but you know, um, Unless you can empathize with those kind of people, are you really empathetic? And even from uh, the standpoint of me being uh, a pretty left-wing person um, and thinking of the, the prison industrial complex, thinking of our current justice system, um, I'm someone who has always advocated for rehabilitation. I think the way things work now, it's all about punishment um, in the United States. I'm Canadian, but in the States, a lot of it is about getting free slave labor because <laughs> slavery is literally still legal in the United States in the sense that if you're in prison, it's legal to do slavery against you. So, you know, I, I know a lot of people know that, but it's just crazy how it's just like accepted. Like, oh, yeah, like prisoners can be used as slaves. Like, yeah, that's just how it is. But anyways, um, so, yeah, I obviously think the current prison and justice system is really fucked up and I am someone uh you know a lot of people feel this way but i'm one of them um things need to be based on rehabilitation i believe in giving people second chances you know not just letting them back out into the world right away to just do whatever the fuck they were doing before but i feel like if you're convicted and caught um you know doing a horrible crime you shouldn't just be sent into like a tiny cold cell and treated like a farm animal or even worse like treated like a piece of shit like a piece of garbage 
just like locked away in a small cell riding away like what what good does that do anybody you know what i mean like sure you take that person out of society um but like if our tax dollars are going to prison why would you want your tax dollars to be used to basically like torture somebody uh for you know 80 years until they die uh when they could be used instead to help try and rehabilitate that person so as someone who really believes in compassion empathy rehabilitation is what i believe in i believe in second chances um but it has just been so hard for me to apply that principle to people who are abusers and rapists. It really has been. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to lie. When it comes to rapists, I don't know if I'm there yet. I, I still don't think I have the ability to empathize with, uh, with people uh, who, have, who have raped other people. Um, I have only barely gotten to the point where i can have empathy for abusers um and so that's why this video is happening because x uh you know at least from what i know uh he never raped anybody um but he was again probably an abuser um and i still am disgusted by that i still am you know <laughs> i feel very sorry for um his ex who I, yeah, I mean, I, I can't speak for her, but I'll, I mean, if she went through even half of what she said, which I think she did, um, that's horrific, it's traumatizing, and yeah, just disgusting of him, and obviously a horrific thing that, I mean, you can't really ever forgive someone for that, but what I really realized is that by wishing death on him, I basically didn't want him to get a second chance at life, a, a chance to better himself, a chance not to redeem himself, because I, I think that once you do something like that, you can never make up for it, but just a chance to be better, to do better, to give back and to do positive things that, again, they don't erase what you've done, but, you know, if when you're young, like, let's say he did go on to live another 60 years. And so when he was young, when he was a teenager, I think he would have been 17 or 18 when he did this. And that's the other thing. He was so young. But so he does this horrible, horrific thing when he's 17 or 18. And again, he can never erase it. He can never undo what he did. He can never undo that pain. But if he then spends the next 60, 70 years of his life uh, doing only positive things, you know, not saying that he couldn't make some more minor mistakes, but I'm just saying doing nothing on the level of abuse. You know, if he maybe, um, you know, crashes his car or drunk or something. Like, obviously, you know, uh, that's that's a pretty bad mistake, but it's something that only affects him and he's not inflicting pain on other people. So I don't know. Uh, I'm just saying, if he could have spent the rest of his life um, just putting positivity into the world, giving back, because th these are stuff he was already starting to do and I refused to see it at the time. But if he truly proved himself to not be a repeat offender... You know, like Chris Brown, maybe. And I'm not saying Chris Brown should die, but Chris Brown has kind of proved time and time again that he's not bettering himself. Um, but if X had, you know, actually never done that kind of thing again and had just committed himself to uh, using his platform for positive things, um, I think he deserved that chance. I wish he had gotten that chance to do that. Like I said, there were signs of him already doing it. Um, when the Parkland school shooting happened in his home state of Florida, he uh, did a lot to support the Parkland families. Um, he even uh, made a song where all the proceeds of it went to them. Um, you know, I don't think the song is that great, but that doesn't matter. Um, because I, when I listen to the song, it seems very sincere. And, you know, he put his money where his mouth was. It wasn't just, you know, to get him attention. The money went to the those families. So <clears throat> that seems sincere to me. And, you know, he in his videos and in his, uh, you know, social media and just in interviews and stuff, um, he was very uh, critical of, uh, you know, all lives matter kind of people, of, of the whole Trump movement. Um, he was very vocally supportive of, like, Black Lives Matter, which... You know, this was obviously way before the George Floyd protests or anything like that. So it was when it was even more 
I don't want to say underground, but just not as, you know, mainstream, everybody posting black squares type of shit, like fake activism. I'm not saying all Black Lives Matter supporters are fake activists, but you know what I mean. I'm just trying to say that, like, he was authentically supporting that movement very vocally <clears throat> and just those kind of politics, um, you know, speaking out against white supremacy, um, just being very vocal and political on important issues. He even was like a Bernie Sanders supporter, which is something that for any other artist, I usually <laughs> think is a positive thing. You know, when I found out Cardi B was a Bernie Sanders supporter, I liked Cardi B like 10 times more and I already liked Cardi B. But you know, I, I, <laughs> I'm someone who I, I wanted Bernie to win both times he ran. Um, those are my kind of politics. So yeah, I, I, I just think um, X had a lot of things about him that looking back, um, it, it seemed very clear that his heart was in the right place on a lot of issues. And it seemed like at his core, there was a lot of good in him, but I just refused to see it at the time. And I, I only wanted to focus on uh, the horrible things he did, which again, they should never be erased. That's, uh, th this, is the, this is what I just was not able to realize before, is that even if you don't erase that stuff, you can still empathize and see the good and bad in that person. And again, this is not me trying to excuse what he did at all. But X was obviously an extremely tortured, uh, pained, um, twisted, mentally unwell, depressed person. And, you know, he grew up in a bad environment. He was traumatized. Um, I don't know if he was ever diagnosed, but from what he said in interviews and in his music, it seemed like he clearly had some kind of PTSD maybe or a, a similar uh, condition. And, you know, people who have that kind of trauma, that kind of pain in them, are way more likely to take that pain out on the people around them, on the people they love, on their partners. Um, and again, this isn't me trying to excuse that at all, because I don't think you can excuse that action ever. But I think it's very fair to say that someone who grew up traumatized, who is, you know, mentally tortured, they are far more likely to become an abuser than someone who grew up in a stable, loving, caring home and had... Uh, you know, a very mentally stable life and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, that that's what empathy is to me, is understanding why someone is the way they are. Um, it's not saying that it, it, it's good for them to be that way, but it's saying, I understand the conditions that led you to do this. What you just did was disgusting, horrible, totally immoral, and you have just probably ruined someone's life forever because that kind of pain is hard to recover from. Um, but I don't want you to die. I want you to get a second chance and to better yourself and to make sure this never happens again. And for you to use your platform for the rest of your life to do positive things. And I don't know if that's what would have happened. Nobody does, but I wish he had gotten that second chance. I wish I had wished that for him. You know, when I heard he was shot, I wish I had said, you know what, despite how much I hate what you've done and how much I hate you, I want you to get that second chance. I wish I had put that energy out into the world. I'm not a superstitious or supernatural or whatever person. I, I don't believe that what I think would have had any effect um, on the outcome of him dying. But <clears throat> I wish I had at least hoped for him to live. Uh, if I was more superstitious, I would think me putting that energy out in the world maybe could have changed things, you know? Um, I, I wish I had pulled for him to live. And again, you know, when, when I heard uh, Pop Smoke was shot or when I heard DMX went to the hospital, I pulled for them and they didn't make it. So I, I don't think my, my energy has an effect. But yeah. I wish I had hoped for him to live and I wish he had lived and I wish he was still here today and I wish he could have proved me wrong and I wish he could have became a better person and just done positive things and never done anything again like what he did to his ex-girlfriend. Really this whole video I just wanted to make it because I don't know if I ever spoke about X's death on this channel but I spoke about X's music and X a lot and it was always so hateful. Uh, so blindly hateful, especially towards the music. You know, I never gave it a real shot. I never had anything positive to say about him. I always treated him as if he was the worst thing to happen to music. And 
it just doesn't feel right now that I treated him that way. Um, and I'm trying to grow as a person. I'm trying to become more truly empathetic, like I said. I'm trying to be able to empathize with people that I never thought I could empathize with. Again, when it comes to rapists, I still have work to do. I don't know if it's that important that I ever be able to empathize with rapists, but for me, it's more an exercise of, you know, uh, my, my, my principles and trying to really live by them and to, to live by what I believe and not just, you know, preach it because I believe in empathy. So, you know, maybe someday I'll be able to fully empathize with every single person. Right now, there are still there's still that exception of rapists. I, I can't do it. But with someone like X, I, I'm, I, I feel like I've gotten there. And I can see his humanity despite the horrible things he did. And I, I just wanted to kind of make this video to say, um, you know, to people who maybe watched my channel back then or i don't know i don't know how many people from back then still watch my channel but just to just to put out in the world because you know i already put out in the world negative feelings on x those videos are still up um i don't know if i'll ever take them down maybe i will uh i don't know but if i was putting all that negative energy about him into the world i wanted to put this energy out into the world now too um and just saying that i feel like how i uh treated him and thought of him was wrong um and maybe this video um can you know reach people who maybe kind of felt the same way i did and maybe help them kind of see things different um you know I, i'm not I'm, i don't want to tell anybody how they have to feel about x but yeah i just think when i really think about it through this framing it's just that he deserved a second chance i wish he had gotten a second chance he was 20, I think, 21, 20, 19, somewhere in that age range, but he was so young. You know, I'm 20 now, I'll be 21 in a few months. <laughs> I'm so young, you know? I don't know what the fuck I'm doing in life. I'm sure he didn't know what the fuck he was doing in life. You know, um, he obviously would have been a successful musician. I'm like, not that his career was a mystery to him, but just him as a person, he was still growing, learning, evolving. Um, and in a lot of ways, it looked like he was moving in the right direction. And I just wish he could have kept going in it. And I wish he could have just shown everybody that he could be a good person and he could learn from his mistakes and never do it again. So with this newfound empathy for X, um, I did go back and revisit some of his music because I felt like now that I actually can empathize with him, maybe I'll actually be able to uh, enjoy some of his music or at least even if I didn't personally enjoy it. I could, um, you know, maybe see more of the hype in him. And I definitely do now. Um, I went back to three of his projects. Uh, Revenge, which is like a little compilation, like EP thing that he put out with some of his SoundCloud uh, singles and songs. Uh, I think it was in like 2017 or 2016. And this one, I still just, I kind of feel the same about it as I used to. I just don't really care for the music. Um, you know, even taking away the blind hate I used to have. I just don't really think the music on this one is particularly good, so I'll forget about this one. Um, then there was Question Mark, I went back to that. And I do like it more than I did, because, you know, back when it came out, I would have thought it was like the worst album of the year, I would have thought it was all horrible. Um, I don't really like it, but I appreciate it more. And I liked some of the songs, I think Moonlight is a great track. Um, and I especially think that uh, Schizophrenia and Pain Equals Best Friend, I think it's called, with Travis Barker. Uh, those are two really great songs. They're more like screamo and punk influenced. And they really made me realize that X was really good at making that kind of music. You know, back when I first heard them, I just thought they sounded so corny. I thought they were trash. I was like, oh my God, X doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know how to make these kind of songs. He thinks he's so edgy, but he's just trash, blah, blah, blah. But listening to them now, I'm like, wow, these are actually really good, like, screamo slash punk slash, you know, whatever songs. Um, and yeah, like, as someone who, you know, I, I won't say I'm like a punk or screamo or emo connoisseur. Like, I'm not as well versed as people who, like, that's their favorite genre. But I've listened to my fair share of those genres. I've listened to plenty of albums from each of them. And, you know, I, f I feel like I can say that 
X's rendition, his take on those genres was really awesome. Like he, he did it, he did it really well. Vocally, he killed it. The production on those tracks is really good. The mixing is great. Uh, just the energy is there. Like he really captures everything about those genres perfectly. Like, yeah, he did them really well. And I think if he ever made a full album of that style of music, I think it would have been really great. So yeah, uh, I, I think that style of music is probably more of what I would have wanted to hear from him if he had uh, gotten to live longer. I mean, sadly, of course, he never had the chance. But yeah, the rest of that album, I, outside of those few tracks, I didn't really like going back to it. Um, I just think a lot of the, the trap and like cloud rap and pop rap kind of stuff he was doing on there, it just sounds very standard, like for the time um very derivative like i just don't think he brought anything special to that sound and i don't really think that the songs he made were particularly like catchy or or like stand out either like they just sounded really standard really derivative really unexciting to me and again like if people like those songs you know more power to them but just songs like money or uh smash or going down like th those songs on there yeah i just i just feel like he didn't really add anything or bring his own unique like twist on that style of hip hop. And it, it just, to me, like doesn't really sound much different from stuff you'd hear on a trippy red album around that time or a PNB rock project around that time, or just like that, that, that whole scene, like, I don't know. It was just very average for that style of music. And then some of the other like experimentations he did on there, like um, I don't even speak Spanish, lol, like, it was a really just kind of boring reggaeton track. I, I don't know. Like, he tried a lot of different sounds on that album, um, which, you know, people always kind of use as, like, a positive about it. But to me, it's, like, it's not that interesting if you're trying all these different sounds, if you're not really doing all of them that great. Um, and again, I do think that for one of the sounds, at least, for that uh, Screamo style, I do think that he did it well. So, like, again, I'm not blindly hating here. I, I would be willing to like the whole album if I actually liked it but I just don't think he did a lot of it well. Um, but then we get to 17, um, which of these three projects that I went back to, this is the one that actually really clicked with me. This is the one that I can say that I actually really like and that I think is a really good project. Um, it's interesting because the start of this album, I mean, question mark kind of starts with like a very similar message, but the uh, the intro of this album where he's talking about how you have to really listen to him. You have to empathize with him. You have to want to hear his words in order to enjoy the album. And if you're not willing to do that, like, don't bother listening to it. Like, I mean, I'm kind of the prime example of how true that is. I mean, I kind of think that's the case with any artist. Like, if you're not actually open uh, to hearing uh, an artist, if you're not actually open to, like, receiving their music as it is intended, and, you know, if you're not open to liking it, open to empathizing with it, like, you're not going to like it. So I think it's true of any music. But it's just very um, <laughs> ironic that X is the guy who put this on his album because, like, just for me personally, it's like I literally experienced it firsthand, you know, when I listened to it back in the day and wasn't open to what he was saying, wasn't empathizing with him. Yeah, like, I didn't like it at all. Like, I was just totally closed off from it and, like, wasn't <laughs> actually there to try and like it. Like, I was just there to hate. But now that I actually went in open-minded... And actually wanting to empathize with him now i find myself actually being drawn into these songs and being moved by them and actually enjoying the project so yeah uh, what he's saying you know it may sound a little corny at first but like everything he's saying is 100 percent true so um yeah i actually think that it's a very um appropriate intro for the album um then we get the first actual song Jocelyn Flores. Um, I love that sample. Uh, you know, it's very sparse. It's very like simple, I guess, but I think that kind of works to its benefit because it's just so eerie and haunting. Uh, it really sets the tone for the album well. And then X does the same with his lyrics. I, I don't think it's his the best song lyrically on the album um, or rap wise, because uh, I honestly prefer X when he's a little more emotive or doing more like singing or melodic stuff personally. I think when he's like more flat rapping, he's not as interesting to me. He's a little more 
um just i don't want to say basic but he just like doesn't stand out as much as an artist like he just sounds like kind of a more average rapper i think when he puts more emotion and passion into his performances with his singing uh, or more melodic performances or more like uh you know um yelled or screamed performances although he doesn't really do much of that on this album but just yeah his more his more like impassioned um vocal performances i kind of like more than his just like more dry rapping but uh, it, it does fit the beat, I guess, and maybe I shouldn't use the word dry. He just sounds really dejected, which, you know, it, it goes along well with, like, the whole depression theme of the album. Um, so, yeah, it, it is a nice track to open things up. Then we get Depression and Obsession, which I love the imperfections in the guitar playing on this one. Uh, I mean, that's something I would have slammed back in the day. I probably did in my original review for this album. But now I'm really kind of hearing it more how I do when I hear like a uh, a microphones album with like uh, imperfect <laughs> playing or like a uh, neutral milk hotel or just any like lo-fi folk or indie or rock band. Because I mean, yeah, like this is nothing new what X is doing in terms of having these like raw, rugged, uh, like not polished, not clean, like not perfectly played um, guitars, you know, obviously he's not the first person to do it, but just the way he blends it with his hip hop sensibilities, that's what I feel like gives this album its uniqueness. You know, a song like Revenge, um, that rustic, rugged, uh, folk like instrumental, yeah, maybe you've heard that kind of thing before. I know I definitely have. Um, you know, that instrumental itself, sure, it's nothing innovative. Uh, if you look at X's lyrics and you sing that song yourself, sure, maybe it just seems like uh, a traditional, you know, lo-fi, rustic folk song. Um, but I think it just gets so much uh, uniqueness and flair and flavor from the fact that the way X delivers his vocals is so, like, uh, <laughs> it's so trap and, like, modern, like, mumble rap inspired. You know, he uses those kind of like Lil Uzi slash Trippy slash Chief Keef slash, you know, the whole just like slurred, uh, sour sounding vocals, you know, in my grave, all right. And that was a horrible, horrible impression. I sounded nothing like X, but I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to say. Um, just the style of vocals he was doing, like bringing those more melodic, like mumble rap type uh, vocals on top of this rustic rugged folk instrumental it, it's it's incredible i have to say like when i first heard this song it might have been like my least favorite x song ever i thought it was garbage but now it might be like my favorite i just i, I love that instrumental um the like uh the really like dusty like hand clap like foot stomp sounding drums um and that like just super uh crunchy <laughs> i don't even know how to describe it like it kind of reminds me of like some mark cause like sun kill moon shit uh that he's doing with that guitar uh it, it just sounds like i'm like walking across a mountain range in fucking i don't know ireland uh and just like it's cloudy and foggy and what the fuck is that across the street okay that's kind of weird uh but anyways um <laughs> yeah it just like it, it kind of makes me feel like how i do when i listen to like a fucking richard dawson album and i don't know how many people watching this video know who richard dawson is but he's like this underground like freak folk rustic folk kind of guy and just yeah this whole song gives me like those kind of vibes but then of course with like the hip-hop stuff added and yeah i just i just really love this song uh maybe the best on the album along with fuck love which is also fucking amazing um this one is like the most hip hop, I think, song on the album, uh, or at least like modern hip hop, because I guess, I guess, uh, "Die in the Nighttime" or whatever that like the Nightmare song track four, and Jocelyn Flores, they're more like rapidy rap, but then "Fuck Love" is like you know it sounds like well I mean it has Trippy Red on it, but it sounds like a Trippy Red slash you know Uzi slash whoever song, um, but that doesn't mean that it, X again doesn't put his own spin on it. Um, and it does just have this super depressed, sad feel, very emotional, definitely gets, gets me in my feels now that I'm actually willing to accept it, you know, and actually take in what he's saying and hearing him just talk about like his trauma and PTSD and how he still like hears like gunfire in his head and how he's always paranoid. Like, yeah, like some, like, I, I just think it kind of reminds me almost of that chorus from, um, 
the cranberry song zombie but it's like uh it's like a trap version of that song i don't know I, I think it's just really cool i love the melodies i love the glistening keys it's a beautiful track i love trippy's chorus um even though it's like a melody that trippy uses on like every other song like holy f like it's the same fucking melody he uses on like dark knight demo I, I don't know like tr trippy i i like trippy i think he's dope i think he uh he has his own unique place in rap i do i have no hate for trippy but i was never able to get into him as much as a lot of my favorite artists like for me trippy is more a guy i listen to singles like an individual songs for or i like him on features but i i never really listen to full trippy red albums just because i feel like he kind of struggles with diversifying his his uh songs you know i feel like guys like playboy cardi chief keef young thug future I, I could you know i'll name i could name people for hours lucky uh, whoever I, I just think that lots of uh rappers are who are you know trap artists mumble rap artists blah 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 however you want to label this whole modern rap scene i feel like a lot of guys are just way better at diversifying their sound at trying new things at differentiating their songs from each other and not recycling like flows and lyrics and melodies too much you know all everybody does a little bit of that even old school rappers even musicians from every genre you know nobody makes a totally unique song every time and taking nothing from songs they've made before um but i, I just feel like trippy is kind of like <laughs> <laughs> the worst one just in the sense that like how many songs does he have where he uses that like da, 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 ah, 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 like that that melody you know pull up in the drop top she dropped dead or uh, baby i want you in my life in my life like it's the same shit <laughs> on a lot of his songs even on a lot of his big songs so it's just like you know again he does switch things up i'm not saying he does that every single song but there's just a few common things that he does on a lot of his songs and it's like after a while it's like you start to kind of just like hear the same things over and over from him but anyways that's besides the point but you know i actually do really like him on this chorus so you know especially if if this is one of the only songs that you know that trippy is on like yeah he kills it um, I think even if his vocals get repetitive, I always love his vocals. He's definitely one of the most impassioned performers in modern rap. You know, he ne you never hear a trippy verse and think, wow, he didn't try. You know, it always sounds like he's putting 100% of his lung power and his soul uh, into what he's doing. So yeah, shout out Trippy Red. He did do a good chorus on this. Um, and yeah, like the rest of the songs on here, like Orlando, uh, the outro, dead inside um they're just like they're really powerful now to me when i hear them um i wish again i could have empathized with him at the time but i just think he does such a good job of bringing you into his world uh i love all the imperfections on this album you know i, I would used to criticize them to death but now i kind of realize how human they make this album feel um and just yeah they just allow you to like feel his pain even more you know like the imperfections on this album just go so well you know on an album that's about his imperfections you know what i mean like it all just fits together so well the music complements uh the lyrics and the themes perfectly um i'm not saying this is a perfect album but i just think like as far as what he was trying to do he executed it really really well this was obviously a talented artist he obviously had so much to give i just wish i was able to see it sooner and I'm just glad that I can see it now um, before it's too late. You know what I mean? Um, before I become a crusty old man who doesn't change his opinions on anything, you know? So, yeah, I just wanted to come on here today and say that 17 by XXXTentacion is a really good album. So to anyone who is seeing this, who watched my original <laughs> review for this album, uh, and if you're one of the people who disliked that video, just know that you won because <laughs> in the end i changed my opinion on the album and on x as a whole yeah this is the video i just want to say something i never thought i'd say r.i.p x straight up r.i.p x i wish you could have had a second chance um obviously i'm not your biggest fan obviously i still think that what you did was horrific and unlike a lot of your diehards, I do think you did it. And, you know, I'm not 
blind to that. Um, and, you know, I don't think you were the best musician ever, but I think you were talented. I think you were inspired. I think you were creative. And I wish you could have had a second chance. So, yeah. Yeah. I know this was a random, long, weird video, but I hope you guys um, enjoyed it. I hope you respected what I had to say. I hope you can see where I'm coming from. Um, and I hope you uh, appreciated uh, the fact that, you know, I was willing to admit my mistakes and willing to admit some of the horrible thoughts I had, you know, about X when he died and how I, yeah, at the time was happy. But I, ho I hope you understand that I don't feel that way now. I regret it. And yeah, RIP X. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.